so nice. You only have to look at Kim and Greg Kessels to see how much they adore their newborn daughter, Nelly. The seven week old was conceived using a donor egg because at 50, Kim was too old to use her own. And you've got to pinch yourself when you look at her, say that's ours and she's not going anywhere. She's, she's here to stay. Happy girl. She's beautiful. She's only got eyes for daddy right now, yes. doesn't she? Like many other couples, Kim and Greg were so consumed by their desire for another child, they were prepared to risk 15 years in jail. Because although in Australia it's legal to donate sperm and eggs, it's a crime to buy or sell them. Did you know it was illegal to pay an egg donor? Um, I did, well, yeah. Yes. But you gift it, you don't, you know, make it a money transaction. Did you feel that if you didn't pay someone, then this just wasn't going to happen for you? You resign yourself, just look, if you want this, you're going to have to pay for it because no one's willing to go through all that for nothing. I mean, it's just the way the world is now. It's just all money, money, money. Yeah. Everyone wants money. Look at all his hair. The Frankston couple met later in life and were in their 40s when they decided to start a family together. Kim already had an adult daughter. In fact, she's a grandmother. Hello. Almost immediately, she and Greg fell pregnant and Stephanie was born in 2007. But when they tried to give Steph a little brother or sister, they miscarried twins. You're crushed and devastated and you're, you're rock bottom and you say, where do I go now? How do I start again? You were told that the only way you'd be able to have a baby was through egg donation. Right. How do you feel about that? Well, my initial reaction was no. I just thought, no, I just, if I can't have my own child, I don't want someone else's. Do you help mummy? I do a lot. Except for the nappies. Oh, no pooey nappies? Nope. Had you been asking for a long time for a little baby brother or sister? Yep. <laughs> Between nine-year-old Stephanie's pleas and Kim's yearning to be a mother again, they decided to give it one final shot. And you've written here, are you a kind and generous female interested in helping to finish a much needed family? So last year, at the age of 50, Kim started the search for a donor by placing an ad in their local paper. And I, I was trying to work out how I could get chosen, because there's a lot of ads, mm -hmm. egg donor, egg donor, egg donor. All these oh, people yeah, want oh. someone to help them to have a baby. Yes. Well, it is a hard process, because you're up against a lot of other people who are also trying. Younger and childless Younger and couples. childless couples, yes. And because I already had children, they said, oh, no, you don't need it. You've finished. You've already got what you need. What about all the people that haven't got kids? I felt like I was being judged. How many people contacted you after you placed this ad? Um, two. But Kim one. soon learnt that many of those willing to offer up their eggs wanted something in return, something that was against the law. What's in it for me? That's basically yeah. what they'd say. They'd pick up the phone, what's in it for me? They'd be that blatant about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. and how much up. money they needed and they wanted or they wouldn't do it. Is that a fair question? Um, well, yeah, it's a fair question further down the track, but I mean, you wouldn't ask that up front. But you're know. hoping people would do it for the goodness, of, you know, out of the goodness of their heart, helping another person. The problem about when you have desperate people uh, who have money is that there will be others out there, sharks in the water, trying to take advantage of them. Uh, we've seen it happen with surrogacy. We see it happen, unfortunately, with um, egg donation. It's really sad. Stephen Page is a leading family law expert who says the nation's complicated donor laws are creating a thriving underground trade in human eggs. Is there a black market for egg donation in this country? Well, I think there is at the moment. You know, the stories that I've heard are that there are a number of women who are prepared to be donors uh, in exchange for a payment of money. And I've also heard stories from clients about prospective donors picking favourites about who can and who can't be a parent. And this is just absolutely cruel to these people's lives. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Lovely to meet you. Diane, Shane, Ali, how are you? And this, this must be Liam. the little man. This is Liam. Liam. Yes. <gasps> hey, Would buddy. Would you like to hold him? Oh, you know, I'm not going to say no to that. 50-year-old Diane Johnston and her husband, Shane, know just how desperate parents can get in their search for donor eggs. You know what happens when you cry? Go back to mommy! <laughs>
<laughs> because the Blue Mountains couple have been through it themselves in their battle to conceive six-month-old Liam. I have the touch, clearly. <laughs> Diane and Shane refused to pay an Australian donor because they knew it was illegal. Instead, they decided to travel to South Africa, where it's not a crime. How much did you pay your donor? We paid her, it was eight, about $850 Australian. Did it feel like you were buying a baby? No, I don't think so. It was compensation, which I think is fair, um, but it didn't feel excessive, no, no, not at all. It's still hard to believe that he's here and that we're talking about him and he's real. It was the culmination of a 10-year struggle to have a child together. Early menopause, breast cancer, then years of IVF treatment, in which they endured the heartache of seven miscarriages. You not only grieve for your fertility, but you also feel like that you, you can't provide what you normally should provide in life. And I know for myself, and I know other women have done this, have said, if you want to go and find someone else who can provide, provide you with a child, you can do that. Yeah, I remember that I said, well, no, we, we're going to do this, just not the way we thought we would have. He's amazing, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I'm very lucky. Come on, Munchkey. Here's my little monkey. We are the great exporters of intended parents for uh, egg donation. In one clinic in Cape Town, for instance, uh, there are three to five Australian couples go there every business day. It's an extraordinary number. All right. Early daddy. But Australia's donor laws are even murkier. Because even though Diane and Shane didn't break South African law, <laughs> technically they could still be charged in New South Wales. Although that's never happened. There's a provision of the criminal law that's called a long arm provision. It reaches out like a long arm overseas and grabs you. So I've had clients who have come back from overseas and I go through the story and I say, do you realise that you've probably committed an offence punishable up to 15 years jail? They're horrified, absolutely horrified. And these are good law-abiding people who never realised they might have committed an offence. Diane now runs a website in Australia connecting would-be parents with donors. While there are many generous women out there willing to donate their eggs for free, Every week, she hears horror stories about others demanding payment for their precious eggs. It's a bidding process, grooming them, preparing them, and then asking for the money. What do you think of that? Oh, I'm disgusted by it. These are actual messages sent from one unscrupulous donor. Grateful that I can help someone like you, I admire you. It starts with them reaching out, saying all the right things. And she wants to help her create a beautiful family of yeah. her own. Yeah. Once a donor has a couple hooked, they're not shy in exploiting them. Sorry I won't be able to help you out. The couple that previously got in contact with me had to pay me $20,000 for my eggs. So sorry. So this is the first time she's asked for money. Correct. Well. It quickly becomes a bidding war. The donor playing two or more families off against each other. My option was you, but they put the cash in my eyes. So she's talking about another couple here, I assume. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But the, oh, then she's come back, basically asking for a counter offer. Yes. Yeah. How much can you pay me? So she's asking her if she'll. Better yeah. the twenty thousand. And how many people do you think end up paying? I think most most recipients in Australia pay. Yeah, I do believe that. Percentage, yeah, seventy, eighty, maybe even higher. You know, it's extortion, isn't it? Yes, and the recipients play the game because that's the only choice they've got to have their family and have their little bub, mm -hmm. and that's all they want. That's all they want. In Victoria, Kim and Greg Kessels were also asked to pay $20,000, but they said no. And with Kim approaching her 51st birthday, they feared they'd never see the baby they longed for. That's when Kim met their egg angel, Jade Morgan. Hi, Kim. The 23-year-old is little Nellie's biological mother. Hi, baby. She got in contact with the Kessels after seeing the couple's ad in the local classifieds. Mm. Good How are to see you. you. Good, good. Why did you decide to help them have another baby? Why not try? 
Like, why not try to help somebody? Like, I'm sure if I was in that position, I'd want someone to help me too, you know? Did Kim's age bother you at all? It didn't bother me, um, as long as she was a healthy, outgoing, fun person and loved her kids. That was all I was looking for. The wind, I know. Jade thought long and hard about the commitment she was about to make. Months of injections, counselling and surgery for a couple she'd only just met. There are some risks involved, like hyperstimulation of the ovaries, um, which can, in a small percentage, be deadly. You were willing to take that risk? It took a lot of time to think about. Um, not just that, but my own fertility, my own safety, um, and also on my mind, Kim's safety as well. For Jade's eggs, Kim and Greg paid all of her medical expenses and gifted her $5,000 for her dental work. Even though doing so could have seen them charged and facing 15 years in prison. Do you think there was anything unethical in what you did? Um, no, I don't think Not so. Not unethical. Oh, She's yeah. done so much more than we've done for her. If we've just paid for a teeth, so what? What would have happened if both of you had been locked up? Yeah, I never really <laughs> thought about that, but yeah, that's not a good sign. But yeah, like you, like you, yeah, like you know, if you do pay an egg donor, but you know, like you pay an IVF treatment. The difference is under the law that's legal, and this yeah, isn't. Yeah, yeah, but it's un yeah, it might be law, but it's unfair. I mean, it's just you know, just mm. destroying families. That's what it's mm. doing. Should women who donate their eggs for reproduction be compensated? Well, I think so. We see that doctors are getting paid on the way through, uh, counsellors are getting paid, uh, but for some reason these women who spend 50 hours, multiple injections, uh, have a shot in the stomach uh, every day, uh, have the risk of uh, uh, too many eggs um, being pulled out and as a result uh, they may die, they don't get paid. And I think $5,000 would be a reasonable figure. It's not too high that it's going to result in exploitation and it's not too low that it results in uh, donors not being available. Oh, what do you think? That? Oh, that is so cute. Like For that. Kim, it's moments like this, shopping with her girls, that makes the battle to have little Nelly worth it. She wants to see an egg donor bank established in Australia so it can be regulated properly and donors fairly paid. They're giving so much, they're not just giving an egg. It's a family they're giving. They should be compensated. They're, they're heroes. And, and Jade's a hero, and I keep telling her that. She gets all embarrassed. She knows, oh, Mama. Yes, you do. Look at that smile. Look at that. Would you have done this had you not been paid? Definitely. Of course. Yeah, it wasn't about the money at all. It's, it's about, you know, helping one another and completing, help complete a family. And if I got a little bit of a helping hand here and there, then that's, that's great for me. Do you think what you did was wrong? No, no, of course not. One woman to another, if I can help a little bit, then do that again. I can see that you're looking back at me. And if things go to plan, Kim will soon be pregnant again, using the leftover egg Jade donated. So you're a grandmother with a newborn baby yes. who wants another child. Yes, yeah, that's, that's correct. That's it, yes. But how old is too old? I think 60 is too old. Mm. Yeah, 60, yeah. yeah. But see, it depends if you're a fit 50 or if you're an older 50 too. I breed dogs, I, I play sport, and, and I'm a young mum, I'm not an old mum. Even if you face adversity and everyone's against you, just keep pushing because you'll come out the other end. And we certainly have with Nellie, and she's just amazing. Let's begin again. Let's begin again. Hello, I'm Alison Langdon. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.